this time, I want to talk about how the, the ways that initiation and hermetics specifically, and hermetics um, secondarily, have changed my life or the impact that they have had on my life. Uh, how I live my life differently than I did before. And many of these are, are ways that I think everyone who follows initiation um, must come to, uh, many of them, um, just due to the fact of the nature of the work itself. To begin with, um, when you first read Initiation into Hermetics, you get an impression of this uh, really outstanding lifestyle, so superhuman and uh, special. Um, it makes the person totally unique in the world, um, a powerful um, person. That's so not true. Um, everything in initiation into hermetics, everything is normal for a human being. It's the natural state of the human being. Everything, all the techniques you learn, all, uh, all the manipulation of energies, uh, all the uh, psychism, all the, uh, well, everything in initiation and hermetics are things that humans do every day, constantly, these are just natural uh, features of being a human being. The difference is intentionality and consciousness. These are things like manipulating an element. We all are constantly manipulating elements, um, but we don't recognize that that's what we're doing. We don't do it with intention in that framework of manipulating an element, um, we don't do it with full consciousness that we are actually in this moment manipulating an element. That is the only difference. The initiation in hermetics turns these things into conscious, intentional, intentionally used abilities. That's it. It's nothing special, you know? It doesn't make us outstanding human beings in and of itself. These are just natural things for humans to do, um, like transference of awareness. This is just making conscious and intentional of something we automatically do as human beings, okay? So that's the first thing. Um, so when I see magicians who dress like powerful magicians and have special rings and decorations and all this, well, it's like, why? Why are you doing that? Why are we doing that? Because, you know, I did that at a certain stage in my development. I was like, ew. I'm a witch, or, oh, I'm a magician, and I wore the regalia that expressed that to other people. Um, and eventually I realized that it was just egotism. That was all. Uh, it was, it didn't help me be a better magician, or even a better human being. Um, it was just me stating who I am. And eventually I came to realize that, well, I don't state who I am through the things that I wear, you know. Um, I state who I am by being who I am. And so take that into consideration, please. Um, it's not the adornments 
that make us who we are. It's who we are. Who we are to other people. Who we are in the world. And that's what this talk is about, really, is who we are in the world as Bardenists and Hermeticists. One of the things with Barden's work, very early in the work, right at the beginning, is the, are the black and white mirrors. The looking inside, the know thyself aspect. That is very humbling. It must be humbling because we begin to realize that, whoa, there's all kinds of shit in here. And that's true of everybody else. Everybody we meet has the same kind of shit going on inside of them. Whoa, that has to make us more compassionate human beings, more compassionate to our fellow human being, because they're going through the same struggles we are inside, even if they don't show it, or they show it differently than we do. And that's another lesson from the self-examination work that everybody deals with that shit differently, you know, and we have to honor how they are dealing with it in the same way that we have to honor how we are dealing with it. Uh, so it's, it develops compassion not only for ourselves, because we've got to be compassionate with ourselves going through that work, that was God be horrifying if we weren't compassionate with ourselves at the same time and also compassionate to other people around us and more patient with other people just as we have to learn to be more patient with ourselves doing this process of self-transformation that takes a lot of patience uh, ah shit, I fucked up again Okay, I start over again, etc. It's always being patient with the self. And that has to spill out into the rest of the world in terms of our patience. Um, the mirror work. That will change your life forever. You will always be doing the mirror work. It's an endless process. Um, at this stage, I am always self-aware. I am always aware of my emotional state. I'm always aware of my emotional responses. I am always um, aware of my mental state and the thoughts that are transpiring. I am always aware and mostly modifying my expression. My, it's not quite the right word, modifying. Um, not quite the right meaning. Um, it's not modifying, molding, I'm presenting a fake uh, personality, say. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm making sure that I'm expressing myself all the time, or at least as much of the time as I can. Um, so it's an ongoing process. It just becomes simpler. You know, it becomes automatic and it becomes very fluid. Um, it's not a struggle at all is what it comes down to. But it's always happening because that's the nature of personality and the nature of character. It's always evolving, always changing, always being influenced by various things that we encounter. Working with the elements. This, I think, teaches, most importantly, responsibility. Because we are making changes in the world. What kind of changes are we making? Are we making changes only to satisfy our curiosity? which sometimes is important in terms of learning, but we have to be careful uh, about the ramifications of those changes on the rest of the universe, on other people, on other things. 
yeah, we can't just just indiscriminately go about manipulating the elements. We have to take responsibility for the consequences of what we're doing. Um, and that's part of why so much of the work with the elements starts in our bodies, because we learn from that the consequences of what we are doing. Okay? And we learn to be very careful whenever we are working with another person or animal or plant or, well, any other thing. Um, careful about the way in which we impact them. Okay? Just as we're careful about the way we impact ourselves with the elements. That's something you should learn rather quickly. Um, oh, that hurts. Um, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> another uh, really huge part of the training for me uh, has been the transference of awareness. Um, this taught me so much and changed me so much. Um, the awareness, the experience um, of other forms of consciousness and the fact that everything is conscious, everything is alive and aware of its surroundings. Everything. Um, and through that transference of awareness, you get to experience things from all these other different perspectives. You know, each thing you transfer awareness into has a different perspective on, on existence itself. Um, and you learn so much just opened, it bl blows your mind, really. Blows your little bubble of perception and gets you to understanding that how we perceive things um, is very important. It really shapes um, our experience, um, our definition of things is it, it shaped by how we perceive them. And this ties into the, the, the work with the senses and the creative imagination. Uh, you have to learn about how you perceive the universe. Um, and that, again, is humbling because with the transference awareness, you see that other things you know, perceive an entirely different universe than we perceive, but it's still the same universe. You know, um, these different perspectives are important. Um, <clears throat> so work with the senses. Oh, I learned so much about how limited my experience of the universe is uh, my experience of other people, my experience of uh, everything is so limited and shaped by how I perceive it, by the um, physiological limitations of my senses. And not only my physical senses, but how I think of them. So, I mean, it's all these ways, how we think, how we feel, uh, shapes how we perceive. And these are important things to know. And that impacts your interactions with the universe because you recognize that, well, this might not exactly be, it might not exactly mean uh, what I am thinking of the perception. <laughs> how I am interpreting the perception might be off the mark. Um, and so it deepens how I look at things, how I perceive things. I try to perceive things more holistically uh, from different perspectives. And it, it broadens my understanding in that way. Working with the, the depth point really changes how you are in the world. The depth point, having that as a resource 
that you can tap into at any moment. It's sort of a place that you can go, that you are all by yourself. You are separate from the world. Gives a source of calm when you need it, a source of grounding at any moment, um, a, a, a place you can draw back from things and take uh, a less involved look at the world and what's going on around you and within you too because you can separate and so much from what's going on in your emotions and your mind that you have it's a great perspective and it, it gives perspective to life um, to just about anything um, and that changes um, one's footing in the world um, you can be um, a steadfast anchor in a situation because of your depth point. You can use it to really to anchor situations that are getting out of hand, for example, um, or that are straying from uh, a needed focus, uh, etc. It it's, gives one, a di like I say, a different footing in, in the universe. Okay. Yeah, you, you really learn uh, your place in the universe, uh, which should make you a, a more humble person um, in all of your interactions. Also, a person more concerned with the welfare of others and the welfare of the world in general. I think as Hermeticists especially, we have a responsibility to use what we learn um, to help heal, <laughs> to help heal others, to help heal ourselves, to help heal the world in to whatever degree we can. You know, one of the most healing things I do in a day is smile. <laughs> Make other people smile. Make another person feel good about themselves, um, about their place in the universe. Um, being kind, just simple human kindness, that to me has to be uh, an expression of a hermeticist, um, a, a greater degree of kindness and generosity, because hermetics leads you to the, the clear understanding that we are all connected, everything is connected, what we do to another, we do to ourselves. What we do to ourselves, we do to the whole. Um, and it's our purpose as beings to manifest the I in the moment, in the present moment. And so, that's the ultimate connectedness <laughs> with everything that is. And so we move within this interconnected universe, and we should move. We must move in a positive way. Um, there's no point in moving in a negative way. Um, and as a hermeticist, as you progress in the Barden work, you are... I mean, it's an automatic response that you are doing things suddenly that, that promote growth, that promote healing. Um, that's what we do. Um, yeah. As a byproduct, 
of my initiation into Hermetics training, I can see into people. Um, I can look at a person and immediately see into them, see, um, see what they're thinking at times, um, see how they're feeling, uh, see recent experiences they've gone through, uh, see what their childhood was like, uh, what their life experience is like, um, and most apparent are, you know, where they are wounded, how they are wounded, what wounded them, um, and also what strengths, what, what makes them shine, um, what makes them unique in the world. Um, and walking with that in the world, it's not something that I employ very frequently, um, out of respect. To me, that's a big deal. Um, and I think that's something that, that all magicians, uh, all hermeticists, and specifically all bardenists, have to really engender in themselves, is respect for other. And not only respect for self, but respect for other. Um, the respect that allows others to have the boundaries that they wish, um, to reveal only what they want to reveal. Um, we all do that, you know, just in normal everyday interactions with people. We present uh, a facade, basically. We present parts of ourselves ourself that generally that we think are acceptable to other people. Um, we try to project the best parts of ourselves, usually. Um, um, so, you know, we have to give other people the respect to be able to do that and, you know, be comfortable in the fact that this other person, you know, the, the, the magician, is seeing only what they want to reveal, you know? As we don't need to know uh, these things about everybody we meet, you know, at certain times it's very appropriate. Um, <clears throat> but we still have to treat people with respect uh, when we see things, uh, like w when we see their inner wounds. Um, don't put your finger in it, you know, unless they want you to put your finger in it. Um, yeah, we just have to be, has to be treated with care uh, with other people. At the same time, it gives me a very different perspective um, <clears throat> on specifically groups of people. It's mostly people that, that hide things in this way. Um, <clears throat> um, but it's also valuable, very valuable of animals that don't hide things in that way. Uh, it, valuable f in terms of understanding them. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it really, really deepens your understanding of animals, specifically. Uh, one thing I wanted to say is that uh, things might seem like a struggle in the beginning, like, uh, oh, geez, just everything from step one to step two to step three, you know, for, for example, the uh, exercises with the senses. People have a lot of trouble with this, um, wrap, mostly wrapping their mind around it. Um, or working with the elements. People are like, what the hell? You know, I, I'm not feeling anything, you know, I, but I can imagine it, but I can't feel it. Just keep going. <laughs> Just keep doing it. You eventually reach a moment where you do feel the elements. 
you do feel them. Um, yeah. The moment when you do experience the emptiness, it's like, oh my God. And then, of course, you have to get back to the emptiness, but, you know, there, you just continue with it until you reach that moment when you first experience it. And then once you first experience it, like the vital energy, the first time you experience that, you then have a grasp on it, as it were, uh, and you go back to that kind of experience, and you keep repeating those experiences, and you build upon those experiences, and it becomes easier and easier and easier, like child's play, you know, to borrow a phrase from alchemy, it's just so easy. Uh, uh, I mean, I can build a charge of the electric fluid right now that is really strong. In a second, just thinking about it, and I can dissipate it just as quickly. Um, I, I work with the Catholic Brilliance and the Adonai light, most especially. And, you know, it took me so long and so much effort to be able to accumulate just, you know, a handful of Catholic Brilliance. And now I can accumulate a roomful in a moment with just a thought. I can accumulate the Adonai light, which originally was just such a, a meager flicker of the Adonai light that grew uh, bit by bit into larger quantities. Now I can spread it out for miles, get a dense enough uh, charge of Adonai light that it will affect a radius of many miles. And it's just a matter of practice. It's just a matter of doing. You know, it becomes automatic and easy and simple. And these things lose their thrill. You know, it's not some great magical achievement anymore. It's just every day, ordinary. It becomes a continuous part of life. Ordinary, everyday life of the Hermetic Magician. <laughs> that's all. I guess that's really the, the gist <laughs> of what I have to say. Um, so, I will return uh, when the time feels appropriate uh, with another video on another subject. I hope this was at least entertaining for you. Bye-bye.